I wonder if Sir Jim Ratcliffe will stay with it, with his intention to be back in the bidding for Manchester United. Well, we've only now found out, yes, he has officially entered the bidding process to buy Manchester United. His company, Ineos, has confirmed it. So now we know he's in the mix and uh, that has been widely covered today uh, in every aspect of uh, the written and broadcast media. So now it's official. He's in there, Simon. We've spoken about Sir Jim before. Um, After a failed past deadline offer for Chelsea and previous flirting with United, how seriously should we take Sir Jim's intentions? Is he in it to get it? And do you expect him to get the club, Simon? Um... Um, is he in it to get it? He's in the conversation. Will they get? Well, it depends on the price that Man United think they're going to get. It depends what this merchant bank think Manchester United are worth, because they're all getting excited in America about the worth of English football clubs now. Well, the Glazers want more than five bill. Yeah, and I think that's probably somewhere where they are. But that's not the conversation that's being had here. The conversation that I've understood it to be that the Rain Group think that they can get north of six to seven billion sterling, which is eight billion. In dollars now, of course, with the pound being weaker for the Americans right now, it gives them a more reason to buy football clubs and more reason to invest because they're getting more bang for their buck, both literally and metaphorically. But not at seven billion quid is Jim Radcliffe going to buy this football club, and certainly not on his own. You know, he's worth inordinate amounts of money. If you want to talk about fifteen and a half billion dollars, thirteen billion quid, and suggest that he's going to spend sixty percent of his worth to own Man United, then you're away with yourself. He's not going to. Can he do it? Yes. Will he do it at that level? Probably not. Why would he do it? Well, if it's going to cost half of what you've built up over your lifetime. Well, it depends what his, what his motivations are and what he thinks it is. Why would anybody spend 2.5 billion on Chelsea at this know. moment in time and suggest know. it's some sort of philanthropic exercise well, well, when we all know it's a return on investment? In August, Simon, he said quite succinctly, I want to buy United. Yeah. At a, at a reasonable price. So that intention remains, but as you rightly say... At a reasonable price. It's what, yeah, what's he asking? I mean, Jim Redcliffe, Red Redcliffe is a very astute businessman, a very successful businessman. He also has quite a significant footprint in sport, whether it's in cycling or whether it's in motor racing or whether it's in the football clubs that he's involved in Switzerland and France in. This is nobody's fool. And obviously part and parcel of his motivation is to own, arguably... The biggest football club. Man United winning the Premier League. Man United being back amongst the elite will eclipse everybody economically. The fact that they're not far behind everybody and still not pulling up any trees tells you you that once they're back in the groove again, they'll be back in the economic top of the tree scenario. So with that in mind, it's all about what, what Radcliffe feels it's worth to him. Why did Elon Musk buy Twitter for 40 billion? Didn't use his own money, used lots of other people's money, sold a lot of Tesla stock to get to that position. He had an end game attached to it, which is influence. Jim, Jim Radcliffe just buying Man United because it's a trophy is not where this is going. And then you hear this ridiculous sideline noise from certain Man United fans that you ain't got enough money. Right? <laughs> and that sort of stuff. I mean, yeah. you, you can't, some people you just can't, some, you're talking to an idiot isn't worth talking to. Sure, you, you wonder what he's thinking is because in November, Simon, he ruled himself out of buying any Premier League club because of a lack of value. Again, value, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? It depends what you want it for, whether it's an economic p- position. If anyone's going to spend four or five billion quid, forget about it. People, I was listening to Eamon Holmes this morning talk about the idea that fo- people own football clubs. are just businessmen. Well, if you're going to spend f- five billion on a football club, you are going to want some return on it. We can't all expect everyone to be a fairy godmother trying to influence people's thinking by being a nation state buying a football club for very different reasons than somebody that's a commercial man that's indexed to it for other reasons. So there has to be some form of commercial thinking behind it. So with that in mind, do Manchester United get sold at six or seven billion quid? I'd be gobsmacked if they did. If it gets into the territory of between four and six, and by that I mean probably five, then the conversation happens. I mean, when you envisage the scene, Sir Jim is in there, the Qataris suddenly yeah. arrive in the mm. scene with the Saudis. Yeah, I think the, the Qataris... The complexion of the whole thing changes, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it, does, it, becomes a competi- it becomes competitive tension in the conversation, doesn't it? It becomes slightly in the territory of a bidding auction. Right? But even the Qataris and even the Middle Eastern guys aren't stupid. They bought Newcastle for 350 million quid, right? And they'll turn it into whatever they want to turn it into. They didn't go and spend the King's mm. Ransom to buy Newcastle. They bought Newcastle at a market price, and some would argue that 350 million quid for a Premier League football club that has the potential of Newcastle is very small beer. The Qataris, I think, will probably, in my view, be more inclined to fire their guns metaphorically at Liverpool. What do you think Liverpool's worth compared to United? Well, it's hard no, to say. It, it's because they ain't worth what they're getting paid for. 
You know, the value to other businesses, the value for the brand of football clubs to be associated with other businesses is quite significant. Mm. So you've got to put ta- a tangibility to an intangible value. But you, if you're looking at Chelsea at two and a half billion and you're looking at Liverpool with the worldwide footprint that Liverpool has, which is bigger, better mm. and more entrenched than Chelsea's, right? Then if Chelsea are two and a half billion then Liverpool are somewhere between three and four billion. And if Liverpool are between three or four billion, then Manchester United are somewhere between four and six, which is probably five. And even at that level, it's ridiculous. But you and I, Simon, in Qatar, and I'm sure you might have mentioned this, but I'm about to, and I think it's fine saying it. You and I were with Nasser al Khalafi, the mm-hmm. chairman of Paris Saint-Germain. Yep. When he confirmed to us that day, and that gentleman, if you remember, who was in the uh, corporate suite we were in, yep. who had just left and it, 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 we, we didn't get our hands on him, had bid $4 billion for PSG, yeah. and Calafi had said but no. There was, there was so much more of this race to be run in football finances. You know, you look at the NFL clubs in America, and you look at their broadcasting deals, which are probably twice the size of the current revenue being generated by a top English Premier League football club, and you look at the NFL valuations of their clubs, and they're all talking about that in the billions, and their marketplace is nowhere near as big as this football marketplace. So there's lots in this race to run, right? Mm. So you can see the reasons why the economic value of these football clubs. But PSG don't fall into that category. God love you, Nessa, but it doesn't, because the league itself is a substandard league. It's not going to generate the revenues that the Premier League is going to continue to generate, no. and it's not going to be at the front of the queue when the next evolution of football comes up. Long. So the, the, I don't understand that valuation. Okay. And I'm not questioning NASA's word, but no, I, don't, no, no. I don't understand it. Would a British-born buyer fit the iconography of Manchester United more, if, more suitable? If it, if it gave the Manchester United fans everything they want, when they want it, how they want it, then yes, it will. If it doesn't, then there'll just be another owner that's in it for their own reasons, that has their own motivations, that's another suit in the boardroom that doesn't get the dynamics of what a unique football club Manchester United is. Isn't the isn't the cost of revamping Old Trafford or rebuilding it factored into the price? Yeah, that... but that, they, that's easy done, isn't it? If, you, if you're buying, if you're building a stadium for two billion quid, it's worth two billion quid. So you, you, you don't necessarily have to use your own cash for that. You can strap that against the revenues it's going to bring in. Right. In the same way that Chelsea... Chelsea weren't going to... There's a myth that Ramovich was going to write a cheque out for Chelsea. He was out in the marketplace, I know, trying to borrow money to be able to build the, rebuild Stamford Bridge and trying to get a ticket that was much more economical than the prices are being offered out there. So there's nobody in their right mind that's just going to use their own cash to build bricks and mortar because there's no need to. Bricks and mortar retains a value. It ain't a player, it retains a value and it generates a revenue stream. And maybe players do, but most of the time you're buying players for the here and now. A stadium you're buying for the here and now and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And you're building a stadium that's going to have 100,000 fans in it. You're going to put an extra 30,000 fans every game in there, which is going to bring a revenue stream of probably an extra 20 or 30 or 40 million pounds a year, which will finance the cost of the stadium in the first place. Simon, to finish with at this point, the conventional thinking around this latest uh, speculation about Manchester United is that a new buyer will be in place by the end of the season. Do you think that will happen? I would... This is not Chelsea. To buy a business for this sort of quantum... Look how much trouble there was with Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter and the ultimate situation where he was forced into buying Twitter after actually devaluing Twitter by taking it to pieces and telling everyone it was worth nothing and trying to get it for half the price. He was forced into buying it by Jack Dorsey because of the pre-sale agreement he put into place, and that took six to eight months. I'd be very, 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 very surprised if Manchester United can be bought in four months given this quantum of value that the Glazers are trying to extract from it. They've got a market cap of $2 billion. They want three or four times their own market cap, and they're basing that upon emotional investment and people's relationship with the football club, as well as the intangible value that it might have to other businesses that people that are buying Man United will utilise that brand what for. What do you mean emotional investment? When did they emotionally invest? Well, uh, no, no, the emotional investment, who's going to buy it? So in the instance of Jim Radcliffe, his yeah. is an emotional investment. He will have an emotional investment. That card can be played in that conversation. In any other conversation where it's a hard-nosed Chinese man or Middle Eastern fellow, they're not going to have an emotional investment yeah. in buying Man United. They're going to have a desire to buy it for their own motivations. Jim Radcliffe will have a proportion of his makeup being, this is the club I love. What percentage chance do you give Radcliffe of getting it? Uh, all based upon the price. If it's if it's beyond five million quid, not, five billion quid, not a lot. Okay, and not on his own. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.